What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, I wanna take you through a little bit about how the kernel methods work in Ruby and really how private methods work. So I just published a video that I'll link to in the description on building a chat server with Ruby. And while I was working on that, it occurred to me that I wasn't really sure why when you log into IRB, you can actually do puts or or other sorts of operations like that like that was a little bit uh strange because i kind of have an idea of like how things normally work and i was just like i don't really know where that comes from and so let me uh walk you through an example of sort of a regular class that will show you kind of how private methods are implemented and then we'll come back to this question later so in my code editor I'm gonna create a new file I just have a folder open here you can call it whatever you want and I'm in the same directory on my terminal I'm just gonna create a folder we're gonna create a, a class called dog it doesn't really matter you can call it anything you want and we're just gonna define a couple of super super simple methods so I'm gonna create a method called bark and in here, instead of doing the normal thing and printing out some text directly or something, I'm going to call a private method that I'm going to call bark like this. Now, you don't actually need the parentheses. Sometimes I like to do that just to remind myself that's actually a method call. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, so then we're going to write private, and we're going to define a private method, underscore bark. And um, in here, we're just going to put and say something like rough and that's basically our class all right so back over in the terminal what we can do is just require dot slash dog and then we should be able to say dog equals dog dot new and then call dog dot bark so none of this should be really surprising um, now what happens if we try to call dog dot underscore bark and so we're going to get this no method error, but what it's going to tell us really is going on is private method underscore bark has been called for the dog. And so let's dive into a little bit about what that means. So private methods essentially are not allowed to have a specific receiver. Um, so what that means is if you have the dog and the way this let me actually back up just a little bit the way that this works in ruby if you don't already know is you have an object so we have our dog and you might call this dog the receiver and then the, you have a dot and then you have a message that you want to send the dog so you want to send the dog the message bark saying that you have a method bark on over here is essentially saying that the dog knows how to respond to that message so we could send the dog any message that we want. So we could say dog dot walk. And so we're sending the dog the walk message, but it doesn't know how to do that. So it's going to say undefined method walk. I'm going to move my window here up just a little bit away from the bottom of the screen. So hopefully you can see that a little bit better. So what I meant to say earlier is that private methods are essentially methods that are not allowed to have an explicit receiver so you can't say dog oop, that's not what I wanted to do you can't say dog dot underscore bark you're only allowed to call underscore bark in the context where it doesn't have to have a dot in front of it and the only context where that is true is basically where Either you have the method defined directly in the class like this, or maybe it's inherited from a parent class or included from some module, which we'll talk about more in just a second. To take this a little bit further, let's look at how you can introspect this. So this is something you may or may not know that you can actually do. So over here, we can say dog.method, and then we can give it a symbol with the method name. So we can say bark, and you can see right here that it's actually sort of syntactically pointing out that this is a method, which is actually kind of strange if you look at this. This seems to be saying this is a method object, so everything in Ruby is an object. I, I'm not going to claim that's exactly true because I don't really know, but I'm, that's what it looks like to me. Um, so we can say dog.method.bark, and then what we can do here, I assume it has to be an object because then we can call more methods on it. Um, so right here we can actually check out... Um, to push this 
introspection idea a little further, another thing you can always do is say dot public methods. And so you can see here there's a bunch of methods we can actually call on the method object. So yeah, it has to be some kind of object. Um, so, and I bet we could check the class, and I bet it's a class method. So yeah, there's a method object. So this is the interesting thing about Ruby. You define a method and you get a method object. Um, so anyway, so that aside, so one of the methods we can call on our method is receiver. And so this is going to tell us that the receiver of this message where we to send it is the dog instance. Now this is different than if we say who is the owner of this method. This is going to tell us that it is the dog class. Okay, so hopefully you're still with me because we're about to get into some slightly more interesting territory. So if you look over here, you see how we're calling bark with no dot in front, so we're not saying like um, dog.bark or anything, it's just bark. Well, we're also doing dot puts, or, or puts with no dot, rather, right? It's just a naked call to this puts method. So, you know, let's try this. Let's say dog.puts, and then hello. I mean, it works right here. It works all over the place. Should this work? And so we're going to get a, a no method error, private method puts called for dog, which is kind of interesting. So let's try this. Let's go back to our terminal and say dog.method puts, and then check the receiver, which is obviously just going to be the dog. Um, and it's specifically it is this dog. Um, so it's telling us that if we were to call puts on the dog, the person or the dog rather receiving, it is this specific dog that we have in memory right now. Um, but let's check the owner. So who owns the method puts? And we're going to find out that this is the kernel. So the kernel is a very, very, very high up object in the Ruby world. So let's check this. So if we say dog.class, so the, that's obviously the dog class that we just wrote. But what is that, uh, what does that inherit from because we didn't, it's not like we specifically inherited from anything over here. It's not like we said dog is a animal or something. But there's sort of an implied inheritance in here. So what is the superclass of the dog class? And we're going to find out that that is object. So basically, everything that you create that's an object will inherit from this object class. But object uh, also has a superclass which is basic object. Now, I don't want to go too far into that, but one thing we can do here is say dog.class.ancestors, and you'll see here that it's got its own class included in there. So let's just clarify this a little bit and say dog.superclass, dog.class.superclass.ancestors, and we're going to see that the ancestors are object, kernel, and basic object. Now, kernel is not a class, it's a module. And I believe that kernel gets included in the object class. So every object in Ruby has these kernel methods in it. So if we go over to a browser window, if we take a look at the kernel module, and I was right, it says kernel module is included by the class object. So, so its methods are available in every Ruby object. So it actually helps to read the docs. Um, so if you scroll down here, you can see we have our puts, print, all sorts of things. So all of these methods are what are essentially available in every Ruby object. So we won't go too deep into all the different things you can do, but I wanted to just kind of point this out. So the main thing that I wanted to show, I'm going to go ahead and quit and clear, just to kind of reset my console here. So if we open up IRB again, what I wanted to point out is inside of our IRB session, oftentimes, you know, one of the first things you learn how to do is say puts hello world. And so if you look at this, we're actually calling puts in kind of the same manner that we did over here, um, which is interesting. So let's check on what the heck is self. So if we just type self and hit enter, we get main. So, okay, that doesn't tell me much. What is self.class? And so it, there's something going on here. I mean, I'm sure I, you know, there's more to IRB than we just meet the eye here, but it seems like we're inside of an object, just a base class object. 
Um, so if we try to call self dot puts hello, we get this same thing. And so essentially what's happening here is like when we're in IRB, it's like we're sitting inside of an object in some way and we can't, you know, we have to essentially use these as though they're private methods and we're sitting inside the object, which is maybe not the most clear explanation, but it's kind of interesting. Okay, so one more little or two more little experiments. So let's just do a quick check and see if we can actually call self.bark. Um, so let's go ahead and do IR, IRB and we'll do require uh, dog and then say dog.new.bark. And so you can see here that you can't even do this within your own class. So private methods have to be called without a dot in front basically. They have to be used in this sort of naked uh, manner. Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate that, and that kind of makes sense then when you're over here, you can't say like self.puts something, like that doesn't work. So it's the same everywhere, so really you're just sitting inside of an object here and you have to use private methods the way that you always use private methods. So the last thing I want to do is a little bit of craziness, um, just to kind of drive the point home even further. Um, I want to give you a little bit of warning, this is a really bad idea and you should not do this uh, ever unless you're just playing around probably or unless you really know what you're doing um, but let's see how we can actually uh, add behavior to the kernel um, so let's just write our own private method in here inside of the kernel now what's going to be interesting about this is because the kernel is included in object whatever code we write here will be available everywhere all of the time so, for example, we can write a method in here that's like, um, say, hi, and then something like um, name, and then just return a message that's like, hello, name, uh, from the kernel. <laughs> Maybe we'll make it a little more suspenseful. So, okay, now if we go in here and we go... Um, IRB and then we require dog if I can type so now without doing anything let's try this let's say say hi and then Jim Bob so immediately our code is available so then we can actually quit out of this and then we can also see down here let's say that instead of just printing out rough we can say say hi and then uh, we can just hard code in a name again um, and then run IRB we'll go ahead and require dog dog dot new dot uh, bark and so you can see that this is obviously available here now again if we try to say self dot say hi and then we give it any name we want we're going to get the private method problem again. So now you know that anytime you see something that's like, like for example, rand, like if we just type the word rand and we get a random uh, decimal, we can check out in our browser and we can look here and see like, oh, there's a rand method defined in the kernel. So, you know, it depends on the context you're working in. Um, but you're going to see these things pop up all the time, and this gives you some idea of what to look for. It's also an interesting thing to see that there's all this there for you to play around with, and you can go read the docs and kind of see you know, what all is available to you. But with all of that said, um, that's it for this video. So if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me know, you know what you're enjoying and what you're not. And also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. With all of that said, I will talk to you next time.